All right, listen, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Before I let you go, you got to answer Aliens. You already told us your favorite book, but uh, believer or non-believer? You know, I, I was I was a biotech uh, genetic guy um, by trade, and um, there's there's a great quote um, <clears throat> by Douglas Adams, who uh, the famous author, and I'm going to massacre the quote, so I'm sorry, but it's something along the lines of, you know, um, can we appreciate the garden for being beautiful without having to believe that fairies live underneath? And he's, of course, probably talking about atheism, which I have no idea. But, you know, there's so much wonder and amazing things in our world, um, you know, and, with, with, and thinking about the natural world and, and look at things that come out of the ocean during the tsunamis and exploration and so much wonderment, um, even as terrible it is, like the, the fact that there's these tiny viruses that can cause such a, a massive disruption to our entire planet and world. Um, you know, that do, do I, uh, believe that aliens are possible? Absolutely. Um, I think it's one of two camps. They're either, uh, super smart and leaving us alone, or they're probably just telling us out there, but like many things, it wouldn't surprise me either way. Um, I, I don't think, uh, you know, my, my little bitty brain is really able to comprehend that there's an old Asimov short story and i'm not going to be able to remember the name i'll send it to you we can put it in show notes uh that that kind of touches on this um perfectly and uh i'll, I'll leave it to the readers because i don't want to spoil it but uh it's a great book so yeah I, I i imagine my my bet would be there are uh but uh um if i live in la so they probably live amongst us already if you walk up to to various parts of la <laughs> they may be here already so you brought up the ocean. Uh, I usually ask people, uh, would you rather go to space or to the depths of the ocean? Which one is kind of more intriguing to you? Um, you know, I come from a family of aerospace guys. My dad was an old school uh, Martin Marietta Lockheed. Um, you know, when he passed away, I, I very fondly remember um, going through a lot of his files that were somehow stamped confidential that he seemed to keep but shouldn't have. Uh, my brother works on rockets at North Europe. Uh, I had started out as an aerospace engineer um, before I realized that actually entailed a lot of classes in statics and dynamics and <laughs> a lot, lot more math than I wanted. Um, so, I, you know, if you were to ask the 10 year old me, I would have said I wanted to be an astronaut and, and learn that aerospace engineering was not the same thing as being an astronaut, by the way. Um, so for me, it'd be, it would be space for sure. So I, I give it, I'd probably give it a, I, if I was a betting man, odds that uh, it happens in our lifetime where we get to go up there, but um, we'll see. I love the ocean too. We live right at the ocean here in Los Angeles and Manhattan Beach. So I spend a lot of time uh, floating around and, and trying to not kill myself surfing. <laughs> I love it. Where um, where can people go uh, read the blog and then also uh, find you on Twitter? So um, my day job is CEO and CIO of Camry Investments, which um, the website's Camry Investment. Uh, CambryInvestments.com or Cambry of Funds. We manage 11 ETFs, uh, which we didn't even talk about today, which is good. Um, all quant base, all sorts of strategies, stocks, bonds, global assets, allocation, tail risk, everything in between. Uh, you can find over 2,000 blog posts at MebFaber.com. Watch me pick fights on Twitter uh, at MebFaber. And of course, the podcast, which you'll have to come on and join us uh, one of these days too, uh, is the MebFaber show. And by the way, all of our books are free to download because I have a still have a running um, fight with Amazon. So if you go to our website, you can download all of our books and white papers for free. What are right, you got to tell me real quick? What's the fight with Amazon? You know, you already hit like my main funny bone, which is the buyback topic. This is probably number two. Um, Amazon, look, love the company, use it every day, transform the world. Um, but the problem is they built kind of a crappy marketplace to where for many years, many, many, many years, uh, people could just upload whatever products they want. And so I had one many times where people would email me and say, hey, Meb, trying to buy your Ivy portfolio book. Why is it 90 bucks? And I said, it's not 90 bucks. What are you talking about? It's 10 or two or whatever they are. And uh, and I say, send me the link. And then I'd go to the link and it'd be kind of a wonky page where, you know, the normal book has whatever hundreds of reviews. 
This one may have three. Then I looked down at the publisher and the publisher was some dude's name and it was published in like 1960 or something. And what Amazon enabled was people to fraudulently upload um, more than one entry for a book. So mine would maybe have 10 or 20. So if you Google the Ivy portfolio map favor or go boss allocation, the, the first one would be me, you know, they would get the right one. But if you maybe Googled Faber Ivy or something, you would get maybe the first listing would be the one that's 90 bucks. So it was an arbitrage where intelligent people and wherever they may be would list fraudulent versions of the book. Now you'd still get the book, but instead of paying 10, you would pay 90. And so um, that's a really terrible way to, to destroy trust. Now, Amazon didn't care because they got paid. Uh, and the seller didn't care because they got paid, but it hurt both the author as well as the buyer. Um, so I emailed Jeff one day, Bezos, and let them know. And we did a post on Twitter where I was like, by the way, authors, I'll send a bottle of wine to the person who has the most fraudulent books. And someone had like 60. I think Jim O'Shaughnessy, who's, who's been a guest, I think, on your podcast, had like 20. Um, and eventually they cleaned it up. And so you, you don't find that as much anymore. There's also fake products on there. Don't get me started. Um, and there's also money laundering where if you steal a credit card and go buy something that may be listed in the far corner, that's like 500 bucks. Um, that's a way of laundering money. And so I had a buddy who sold one day, like $20,000 worth of his books and he's a quant nerd. I'm like, nobody's buying your books. What, what's going on? It's like, I don't know. Somebody just bought 20 grand worth. Um, but you know, you, you find these situations going on anyway, hopefully they've cleaned it all up. Um, I think there'll probably be a multi-billion dollar settlement at some point, but the good news for investors is all my books are free now. So I had enough and I just threw them online and said, I don't want to pick the fight anymore.